Welcome to Good Earth State Parks Visitor Center. As you come in, we have a welcome desk, a beautiful entranceway, a map that we'll explore, and our exhibit. This map is an overview of the park and the surrounding areas. It shows our trail system, the National Historic Landmark, and many other features of the neighborhoods. As you enter in the exhibit, you're greeted by tribal people from the Amer Omaha, Iowa, and Ponca tribes. Three of the four tribes that once inhabited this area. The first part of the exhibit talks about the archaeology that happened here. The first beginnings of it were in the 1800s, and then there was a big archaeological dig in the 1980s. So much information was found out about this wonderful place that was called Blood Run. A very interesting side note was when they started to build the visitor center, in 2014, when they cleared away the land, they discovered earthen drawings called geoglyphs. This is a depiction of what they found underneath the soil. Photographs taken during that time show trenches that were dug, and then different soil was brought in to create these drawings. They believe these happened between 2,000 and 1,500 years ago. Because of these drawings, the visitor center was moved and redesigned, setting it back an extra year before it actually opened. In the 1870s, local residents began recording their impressions of the village site. In 1891, F.W. Pettigrew created a map that depicted the whole area, what was called the Silent City. Between 1400 and 1700, the people lived off the land. The 10,000 people were living here, and hundreds of thousands of bison were also here. They would hunt very near the villages, and then they could bring them back easily. The bison was a main food staple for the people. The men would hunt, and then the women would take over and process the meat, and the hides, and the bones. The murals inside the visitor center were done by Split Rock Studios out of Minneapolis. They were painted in their studios and then brought here and applied to the walls like wallpaper. It was a fascinating process. In addition to the bison, the people who lived here were also farmers. They grew corns, beans, and squash in mounds along the river bottom, the Big Sioux River. They would harvest local plants as well. Trade was a very big part of Blood Run. The residents would go up to Pipestone to gather the Pipestone and bring it back to be carved into pipes and tablets. Other things that were traded were songs and dances, pottery, bison parts and bones, shells, food, bear claws, and many other things.
This mural inside the visitor center depicts what everyday life may have been like. Those tall cliffs in the background there, that would be the South Dakota side. You can see the Big Sioux River running, and then along the river bottom were their gardens, and then their village side was mainly on the Iowa side. The people of this land had mounds. Some were ceremonial and some were burial. But as you can see, they lived among the mounds, keeping the ancestors close. One of the fascinating parts of this mural is if you look at the different hairstyles of the people, you can discover which tribe they may have been a part of. Another thing that you can notice in the murals are the many dogs. I always challenge students when they come in, how many dogs are painted in the mural? Count them. And you will see just how important these animals were to the Native Americans here. Then I ask the children how many horses are painted. And there isn't a one, because this settlement predates the horses being brought from Spain. One of the amazing features within the Good Earth Visitor Center is this life-size replica of a home. It has two frames of small tree branches, and in between those two frames are bison hides. On this one structure here, there are 20 bison hides covering this structure to keep it airtight and warm. They also have a replica of a fire and some beds inside all ideas of what it would have been like to live here. One of the unique things found at Blood Run was the pottery. The people here they called the Oneota culture. They would take crushed clamshell and mix it into the clay so then when it was tempered it would make the clay stronger and the pots more durable. This was one of the many ways that they would say that they were Oneota that lived here. But Oneota is not the name of a tribe. It's an archaeological term used to describe the different peoples of the different areas. And these people, this was one of the ways. This is just a small tidbit of what the Good Earth Center has to offer. We hope you'll come out and explore it all on your own and learn all about the rich cultural history that once inhabited this area. Another great feature within the Visitor Center is our movie theater. It runs a movie called Awakening the Silent City every day, all day, every half hour. The theater can hold 39 people at a time and the movie is about 20 minutes long. It's a great depiction of the history that happened here. as you travel to the east entrance of the visitor center. Information panels take you back in time. All the layers of the earth and what make up this wonderful part.